you know, a lot of investors generally think that uh, lower interest rates are a positive environment for REITs and higher interest rates is an, an environment that's not extremely favorable for REITs. But I would say there's no direct or indirect correlations here. Uh, we really have to keep in mind uh, these interest rate movements in uh, line with what's really happening on the economic front. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Curious Investor, where today we'll be diving into the world of REITs. I'm your host, Fiona, and today we have our market strategist, Chairo Chinana, with us. Hi, Fiona. Good to be back with you. Yes. So as spoken, we'll be diving into the world of REITs, or Real Estate Investment Trusts. So what are REITs? REITs are companies that own, operate, or finance income-generating real estate products. They allow investors to um, invest into real estate without having to directly own the properties themselves. And why are they so attractive? Because they can appeal to both income and growth investors. And they actually pay out a large amount of their income in the form of dividends. So in the year of 2022, when the Fed started to hike rates to combat inflation, it wasn't a very good year for the broader equity markets. And in fact, they were very adversely impacted. But I would say that for REITs, it was even worse and they underperformed the broader equity markets um, in 2022 and also first half of this, this year, 2023. So coming to where we are right now in 2023, where the Fed is starting um, to slow down in terms of the interest rate hikes, and we see that inflation is being um, cooling off, you know, what do you think are the opportunities in the REITs markets right now? Uh, yeah, Fiona, actually, this is a very good starting point because, uh, you know, a lot of investors generally think that uh, lower interest rates are a positive environment for REITs and higher interest rates is an, an environment that's not extremely favorable for REITs. But I would say there's no direct or indirect correlations here. Uh, we really have to keep in mind uh, these interest rate movements in uh, line with what's really happening on the economic front. So if rates are being cut, uh, because of a risk of a recession, then that may not still be a very favorable environment for REITs, right? Even though lower interest rates are meant to uh, help REITs in a way that then REIT managers can uh, refinance their loans at much lower rates. They can take up more loans as well to finance their future expansion projects as well. Um, but if the occupancy levels are low and you know, rentals are low, then of course that does not translate into a good performance for REITs. Similarly, you know, if you're looking at higher interest rates, sometimes, I mean, that's a sign of a very strong economy and that can still be positive for REITs as well. Uh, so uh, coming to a point where we are now in this uh, macro uh, cycle is that uh, certainly rates are looking like they are peaking. And uh, as we've seen recently with economic data, the concerns of a recession are really negligible, I would say. Uh, so, I mean, look at US economic indicators. They are continuing to surprise us on the upside. And Asia has certainly been a very resilient part of the global economy in this entire cycle, and it continues to be so. Uh, so, that presents us with a, a, a favorable environment for REITs in terms of what's happening on the economic front. And then with interest rates speaking as well, that does mean that uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 leveraged REITs can refinance their loans at potentially lower rates from here going forward. And that makes it very important. But again, you know, it's really important to understand the gearing ratio uh, for REITs, which is basically uh, telling us how leveraged REITs are. Uh, so even if, you know, we have to consider an environment where interest rates continue to stay higher for longer, then highly leveraged uh, REITs may still have an issue to refinance their loans. So while the environment is turning a lot more favorable, I would say, one still has to be quite selective about their investments. 
one of the key benefits of investing into REITs is definitely the income because they pay out dividends. Yeah. And the reason why REITs actually have to pay out dividends is because um, they are, it's a regulatory requirement for them to pay out minimally 90% of their taxable income mm -hmm. in the form of dividends. But the fact is that most or a large number of REITs, they actually pay out even more than 90%. Yeah, yeah because their funds from operations is in fact higher than their net income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and certainly in terms of, you know, favorable macro environments, that's the case. And dividend yields is certainly one of the biggest attractions why a lot of investors choose to invest in REITs. You know, the income that you get from dividends kind of adds up to your returns and it makes up a huge part of your overall returns from REITs. Uh, if you consider that you know, a longer time horizon as well. And uh, these days, I mean, of course, we've been talking to a lot of uh, our uh, clients and you know viewers about whether REITs uh, are offering enough of a premium over government bonds, which have also kind of started to offer pretty good uh, yields now. But uh, if you consider, I mean, if you take the example of Singapore, for example, um, REITs are offering somewhere above 8% uh, dividend yields right now, whereas the Singapore government bond is still offering less than 3%. So certainly, I think the premium there is pretty attractive. Um, if you consider, you know, 3% um, uh, versus 8% and inflation still about 5%. Uh, so, so that's a very interesting story. But again, you know, I would highlight here that uh, when something is offering you very high yields, you also have to kind of wait against the a chance of uh, stable uh, distributions over time mm -hmm. as well. You know, for instance, if you're investing in a high yield bond, there's always more credit risks involved with that. Uh, a, a REIT which has a more a stronger uh, backing, you know, of assets would potentially offer somewhat of a more uh, reasonable yield to kind of balance the risk and the reward. So if something's offering me 10, 11% kind of REITs, I would just be a little bit more cautious about understanding whether that kind of a return is really sustainable or not. And, that, and that's a very good point. And another key benefit of investing into REITs is also the diversification. Yeah that it can add to investors' portfolios. Mm -hmm. Given the low correlation that REITs have with equities, um, it may be a good, good choice to actually add it to your investment portfolio to provide a better risk-reward trade-off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very interesting point about REITs as well is that they actually specialize into many different kinds of sectors. Mm -hmm. So for example, you have retail REITs, which uh, you know invest into shopping centers, uh, shopping malls, uh, you have office REITs, you have logistics REITs, industrial REITs, healthcare REITs that invest into hospitals, um, and etc. Yeah, so some of the examples of uh, REITs in the region are like the Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust in Singapore, mm -hmm. as well as Link REIT in Hong Kong, which mm -hmm. invests mostly into commercial REITs like offices as well as retail centres. Um, and also Goodman Group in Australia, which mm -hmm. invests more into logistics and industrial REITs. Mm -hmm. um, and also the Nippon Building Fund in Japan, which mm -hmm. invests more into offices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of different sectors that clients can actually look at. So I yeah. think um, a key question is, which sectors do you think are attractive right now? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's that's a very interesting one. And, you know, Asia certainly seems to be in a position where property incomes are increasing. I mean, if you look at especially uh, Japan or Australia, they are offering, uh, you know, properties are actually having a very good interest coverage ratios. REITs are having a very so strong interest coverage ratios of over 10 times. Singapore, Hong Kong are a little bit lower still, but still pretty healthy interest coverage ratios. So it does appear that uh, despite all these increases, Increases in interest rates. I think uh, the real estate sector is in a pretty strong uh, foundation. And uh, what that means is, uh, I mean, you certainly meant, mentioned a lot of different sectors, um, um, but I think I would say the most interesting are certainly, I think, retail REITs and hospitality REITs, just because of the, the continued sustained increase in tourism that we've been seeing across the region. And the outlook for tourism still remains pretty strong, which means hospitality REITs can continue to benefit 
from them. Uh, increasing footfalls in malls will mean that retail REITs would also continue to benefit from that. Um, uh, I think office uh, REITs also offer a very high dividend yield. I think one of the highest uh, in the region is offered by office uh, yields. Um, but uh, I think the point there is that uh, in Asia, the, the people have actually gone back to offices a lot after working from home during the pandemic years. I think 70 to 80 percent of the people have already returned back to offices. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that the upside from here for return to work kind of a uh, trend is a little bit less compared to the US where uh, work from home is still quite prevalent. Uh, so I think um, office REITs, I think the yield is certainly quite attractive, but I would be a little cautious on that. Uh, the other interesting segment uh, is industrial REITs, and a part of that industrial REIT is also uh, the data center REITs, you know, and with data kind of becoming the new oil, the new commodity that everybody wants with the advent of artificial intelligence as well, every company is trying to uh, make a greater foray into, uh, you know, it's a digital offerings. Mm. And the more you expand on that front certainly means that many companies will need to invest in data centers mm. to kind of store the data as well. So uh, that makes these data center REITs also very attractive. Uh, but of course, again, I mean, I would highlight one key risk here for REITs right now. Um, uh, you know, the Singapore REITs, particularly as I know them, uh, they have a huge amount of investments in properties abroad. So outside Singapore as well. And uh, we have to be mindful of the risks that brings, you know, especially with what's going on in China's property sector or even the risks in the U.S. commercial real estate as well. Uh, I think these are some of the, the risks that we have to continue to, you know, be mindful of and continue to kind of dig deeper into as to whatever REIT you're investing in, which area or which uh, geographical region their investments are mostly concentrated in. So now that we've covered some of the opportunities that we can potentially see in REITs, as well as the risks, mm -hmm. I think it's important to be able to discern, you know, how do you actually pick out a good quality REIT? Mm -hmm. And first of all, is to ensure that this REIT has a growing dividend yield over the long term, uh, something that is sustainable, and you actually know where these cash flows are coming from and that they are transparent. Secondly, is to have um, the REIT, which is having a consistent growing revenue, or a strong, um, consistent growth in net property income. Yeah. yeah, so especially for investors who are focused on growth, then you want to actually focus on that. And thirdly would be to ensure that the REIT has a pro prudent uh, gearing or leverage ratio. So you want to have uh, invested into REITs, which, um, you know, they are prudent in the sense that they make sure there is at least some buffer uh, below their gearing limit about 10 to 20% below their gearing limit, depending on the relevant jurisdiction. This is to ensure that the REIT actually has the capacity to take up you know, more acquisition opportunities where there is, oppor uh, where there is um, opportunities. Yep. And lastly, it's um, very important to know what is the tenancy retention rate, what is REIT, what's the occupancy rate. And of course, it's, it's the most beneficial if occupancy rates are at 100% and maxed out so that um, these REITs are actually maximizing the revenue that they can get. Yeah, so I think lastly, one of the key things that investors can do as well is to actually check out um, the management team uh, behind the REIT, uh, look into their experience, their track record, you know, are they actually doing asset enhancement initiatives to increase the property value? So um, these are the key characteristics that uh, we would recommend for investors to look into before um, investing into REITs. So as discussed, uh, I think REITs can be a good addition to investors' portfolio, um, given that interest rates are starting to uh, come to a peak. Yeah. But, but of course, as we have mentioned as well, it's important to look into the right sectors. So perhaps in like data centers, especially because AI is becoming the new in thing. Yeah. And um, to also pick out the REITs based on uh, the various characteristics that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, so if you're interested to invest into REITs, you can log into the Sexo platform and simply search uh, Real Estate Investment Trust or REITs under the stock or ETF screener. So we've come to the end of our video for today. And if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope to see you in the next episode and yeah, have a great week ahead.